because you love God, it produces a desire to obey Him. And we all fall. What do we do when you fall? You get right back up and you keep on moving forward. The peak of perfection is not hard. It's really, really simple. Now that doesn't sound right, does it? It doesn't sound right when you think about perfection being simple. But we'll get to it. We we look at it because the Word of God says that God uses the simple thing to confound the wise. And so oftentimes, we find ourselves getting wrapped up in ideologies, all these different things that that we have to get into and we think about, and our lives become complex. I don't know if you know, um, or if you're like me, but my relationships are, seem to be ridiculously complex. You know, uh, everything that I do seems to become more and more complex in an effort to make it more simple. Um, analogy to demonstrate would be like, um, we've made, as a society, as a, you know, as uh, as humans, we've made work easier. You know, it's not necessarily we're. Uh, you know, there are those that have to, but our society has always pushed an effort to find a way to make labor easy. We've invented. You know, we've we've done everything we can. We've created complex machines. We used to have to do everything by hand. It used to be, my goodness, air conditioning alone. Uh, man, glory to God, Amen. All these different things, but in efforts to do all of this. What we do is we, for most of us, we go to an office and we spend our time working computers and everything only to come home to go to the gym to exercise because we didn't work that day, our bodies and our muscles. (laughs) And then to make it even easier, we stop going to the gym. We want to come home, go to the treadmill. And even some of us, you see how it comes like this circular thing where in that labor moment that we're supposed to have where we're working our bodies and working our minds, we get rid of the labor and make it as easy as we can, and we find ourselves coming right back around to where we have to spend time in the gym, working our bodies, working everything again. And in efforts to keep things as simple as we can or to make things simple, we make it infinitely complex. And uh, not to say that I'm against exercise or anything. I know I need it and I love it and all those different things. But it's just basically to illustrate of how humans make things Man makes things so complex. And that's what we see here in uh, 2 Corinthians um, 11, 3. And it says this, it says, says, But I'm afraid that just as Eve was deceived by the serpent's cunning, your minds may somehow be led astray from your sincere and pure devotion to Christ. If you back up and read a little bit, you know, Paul's making the reference. He's just got through talking about the church as, as a pure woman, ready to be received as the bride of, you know, Christ in that thing. So he's making a representation of the first woman falling and then the, the scary potential of this, the church, this, this new Eve, so to speak, also falling in the same trap. What is it? This, you know, being led astray by this, uh, this cunning serpent. We see this moment of uh, almost intellectual point in Genesis, hath God said. See, God is simple. Eat of everything except for this. And life is simple. And life is wonderful. And it's easy. And then all of a sudden we bring into this existence... This, this, this thing of having to think about it. Well, we have to make up these different conclusions. We have to draw all these different things. And we find ourselves making the things of God difficult. Hath God said that you cannot eat of anything? And Eve says, well, no. And she looks at it and she sees that it's good. And she begins to, to reason beyond what would be considered the wisdom of God. So in efforts to make things simple, oh, well, it'd be a lot simpler. Well, if it's simple, you know, Eve's sitting there thinking, well, it's simple. It looks good. It's food. It's 
It, it looks good to me. I eat it. Hey, I'll have the knowledge. I'll be able to be, I'll be able to be a help. Who knows? In efforts to make things simple, it became real complex. So oftentimes, and I know I'm not the only one, but so oftentimes I find myself always falling, even though I've been called to perfection. And it's maybe because I'm not focused on the right thing. You know, we find ourselves making things complex whenever God's word is very simple. We even find ourselves debating, and you can, you can read countless volumes of everything on, on doctrine down to, down to the, you know, the word placement and stuff. We've gotten so complex at the word of God, sometimes we forget and we fail to take a step back and see, well, what is God's end goal? What's God's end purpose? What's the peak of perfection? Because if we were able to do that, I would say tonight, this is my point, My point is to do this. My point is to bring everything together for you to make your life simple. And I'm not talking just your life. I'm talking about your finances. I'm talking about your relationships. I'm talking about, um, you know, um, everything, interactions. I'm talking about the span of your life. I'm talking about your children, your children's children. If you will walk away tonight having grasped what I'm trying to give you, what God, I believe, is trying to give you, then you will walk away with a simple approach to life. I promise you it'll change everything. It's going to change your heart, your mind, your focus, what you say, how you feel, everything. And I promise you it's real simple. And you say, oh, how's that simple? I promise you in the next four hours, we are going to really get into how this is going to be simple. (laughs) <laughs> no, but, I, but you had to listen to what I said. First off, what does the word of God say? God makes things simple. It's the simplicity. That's the wisdom. Number two, what does he say? He says that um, it says it's the word of God, so it's real easy. And number three, I didn't say I was going to do it for you. <laughs> I said I was just going to tell you what it was. It's going to be your job to walk out here tonight. And to continue to move forward with it. So simple. How are things so simple? How can we simplify our lives? How can we prevent ourselves from all the struggles that we find? How can we? That's really difficult. I mean, that, people spend their whole lives trying to think of how we can make things simple. Without ever just taking a step. And this is the whole point. If we take a step back and look at what God's end goal is. And if we'll focus on that, we'll find the simplicity of the word. We'll find the simplicity of life. So, what is God focused on? What's God's end goal? We see it at the beginning. We see it at the end. What is it? Well, we see see Christ come and he simplifies everything down to two things. Love God, love others. And that is the whole of the law. Love God, love others. And you say, okay, pastor, yeah, that's a simple statement. But yeah, that's not simple. Oh, I, I, I know. We'll just keep with me here for a second. So loving God, what, how do we love God? What do we do? What are we, how are we loving God? Well, it kind of relates back to that whole, you're the treasure thing. Because you are. Man, I don't know, but when it hit me, when I realized that he loved me before I ever loved him, it made loving him so easy. I mean, I don't know. I can't can't touch it. I can't tell you. But loving him became easy. It began to work on the inside of me. It began to work all the way through me on the outside. It began to affect all those different things as I began to love him because the word of God says, if we love him, we obey him. It is, it's not the implication that if, we, that if we don't obey him, we don't love him. It's saying if we obey, oh, love him, we'll obey him. That's where our focus is. Oftentimes people fail and they say, oh, they struggle with this whole reality of, oh, do I love God? Because I'm constantly failing this I must not love God. I don't think that's what it was saying. I don't, it's not saying, the, the, the converse statement isn't correct there. 
What it's saying is because you love God, it produces a desire to obey him. And we all fall. What do we do when you fall? You get right back up and you keep on moving forward. So loving God, loving others. Now I think there we're starting to hone in a little bit more what we can, what we can focus in on. Because we see Christ at the base of this, we see it in Christ's life. And at the peak of perfection, we see it in his death. See, Jesus loves you. He loves you. And because of that, it changed all the different things that he would do. The willingness. If you look at his life, and we have a clear example just looking at the word of God, at Christ, what was Christ in goal? He said this, mine is to do the will of my Father in heaven. He says, you know, I only do what my father, I see my Father doing. And I'm trying to hold this on, this one little, one little word that's going to solve everything for you. This end goal. Just a little bit. I'm trying to hold on to it just a little bit. But, but you see, man, it's all for a goal. It's all for this one word. It's the peak of perfection. And if you'll, if you'll line it up with this one word, if you'll line it up with, if you'll just line yourself up to it, it'll change your life. It'll change your marriage. It'll change everything if you make this your end goal at everything, I'll tell you what the word is. This is the easiest thing you've ever heard. Relationship. That's God's end goal. It's relationship. You say, oh, pastor, that's, that's not easy. That's hard. Oh, I beg to differ. Now, yeah, it might take a little effort, it might take a little work, but let's look at it for a second. Let's look at relationship. Why is relationship the end goal? Well, we see in the beginning, God wants a family. We see it in the garden. We see it about relationship. Just loves, wants to have relationship. And we see that plan derailed whenever things begin to get complex. Whenever, whenever you know, intellectually we begin to question everything. We question everything down to, we question ourselves, our self-worth, our self-image. We, we, you know, we, we question whether, we, whether there even is a self-image. Do we have those things? We, I mean, there's questions about questions. And it takes, it takes those people to come up with these complicated things. And it takes man, but it takes God just to cut through it like a knife and say, this is so simple. It's about relationship. I pose to you tonight this. I, I, I would say that if everyone would put that as their end goal, every war would end, every confrontation would cease, sin would lose its grip. God would be completely glorified. You say, how do I do those things? How am, I, how am I going to do those things? How am I going to do that? Well, it starts with practice. How did you do anything? It started with practice. How did you, you know, how did you learn to ride a bike? Hopefully most of you did. How did you, you know, how did you, how did you do those things? How did you learn to work your iPad? I mean, there's all kinds of things. I still don't know how to work it. Why? Because I don't spend any time working on it. I have it. It's nice. It's pretty. I don't use it. I don't even believe in technology. <laughs> no, but seriously, we, we find those things that we can just work on. You say, how can I work on it? Well, let's do this. Let's, uh, let's, let's think about this. The very next time you go to send an email or make a phone call, start with this. In your brain, say this. My end goal is relationship. Let that be your motive. Let that be your reason. Let that be your purpose. No matter what it is. My end goal is relationship. And watch yourself as you begin to type. Because so oftentimes, with our words, with our actions, with our thoughts, unaware, we say things, we, we, we in a manner that does not go down that road of relationship. We don't even know it. We look at it in business all the time. And of course, people say, well, that's not professional to focus on relationship. I don't believe that at all. I believe businesses would thrive on relationship. 
think about it like this. It, how, think about it with the next time with your spouse before you wanted to talk about something. The first thing you think is the end goal is relationship. What do you mean relationship? I mean that your end goal is that if you can only have one thing with this person, that's what you're going to have. See, because it relates to what we talk about, you're the treasure. It relates to what God did. He said, I give it all for one thing. Relationship. It was so important to God. He gave it all at a chance for relationship with you. And we begin to work those things. Now, this is where it becomes on you, to work those things. And I find myself, as I begin to roll over this, even um, weeks and months ago, of relationship, of relationship. Okay, well, the end goal is relationship. Okay, and then I started looking at each area of my life. I tried to, I tried to put it into practice. And, and, then, and then to go back and say, oh, my goodness, my motivation there was not relationship. My motivation was self. My motivation was something else. I wasn't about relationship. You might say, well, hold on a second. There are people who are absolutely despicable and horrible in my life who have hurt me beyond belief, and I will never, ever have a relationship with them again. So what do you say about that? And I say, well, hold on. Relationship, in its truest form, points to God. Now, you may not be able to, uh, there might be reasons and all those different things why you might not be able to ever get to that mm, relationship again. But that doesn't mean that your life can't reflect the love that God has for them. The respect of that that points them to relationship. You can say this at the end of your life. I loved them. And I pointed them to relationship. Why? Because relationship is so important. It's the reason that Jesus gave his life. It's the reason why it was so simplified. Love God and love others. If we could all do this one thing, put that as our end goal of a relationship, we would find it so much easier in our life. It would change. Wouldn't it be nice not to have to run through all these complex thoughts of this is how I'm going to say it, this is what I'm going to say, this is, you know, these things that we set up in our lives, these boundaries that we build, these, these walls to keep people in or keep people uh, out and to keep us in or hidden. But what if instead we started to build bridges of relationship. Why? Oh, for opportunity. For opportunity. What if our motives changed just that one degree? What if we were able, because I believe there is perfection. We all fall short of the glory of God. I'm not speaking about Righteousness. I'm speaking about what, what Christ has called us to do, to be like him. And that's where we see perfection. Lord, he's sitting on the, he's, he's on the cross. And this is what he says, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. His end goal was relationship. Could we do any better? Could we be any better? In fact, um, this past Sunday, uh, Life Shape. I don't know how many people got to go to Life Shape. Man, that is really good. I'm enjoying it. Um, my dad got to speak on, um, he got to speak on uh, families and extended families. And uh, I actually want to, I want to show you a clip about it, if you'll let me. I get to do a video thing. It's kind of neat. So let's, let's look at it real quick. You know, there was a time when my son decided that he wanted to, you know, drink alcohol. Do you know there's very little I could do about that? I could have destroyed our relationship. Or I could have realized that, you know, I was drunk for two years. There was very little my mama could do about that. All she could have done was made me mad. All she could have done was ensured I didn't go and see her. All she could do is just, you know, uh, divide it. She could not stop me. I realized no more than my mama could stop me, I could stop my son. I gave him good counsel, and I loved him. And I was there if he needed me and when he needed me, and thank the Lord today, you know, two or three days ago, he decided he would quit. No. <laughs> today we have a great relationship. 10, 20 years is going to come and go. Okay. Look farther down the road. You might say, why did I show that clip? 
I'll tell you. Because that was something that happened a decade ago. I never knew. I never knew. I didn't know, Dad. I didn't know he knew. He loved me. He loved my children that I didn't even have. And he's right. What could he have done if his motivation would have been to be right? His motivation was relationship. When we can turn that one degree, I didn't know. That was the first time he's ever talked about it. I was sitting there and I went, huh. everybody else was laughing and I was going, I didn't know. But doesn't that paint such a beautiful picture? A representation of God's end goal. He looked into the world and saw us in sin. His motivation, his motivation was such for relationship that he found a way to bridge the gap and to do away with it just to the very thing where he could show us not our sin, but our salvation. See, it's the goodness of God that leads men to repentance. What is your motivation in loving others? What is your motivation? Oh, it's good to say, I will love God and love others. But there's a motivation factor when it comes to man. What is your motivation? In fact, I was at a conference with um, a couple weeks ago and for apologetics with Pastor Ken and myself and Michael and it was wonderful and we were we were getting to go and make apologies for the gospel <laughs> people hear apologetics and think what's the thing is apolog you know apologize no it's apologia which means to you know to give it like a legal defense or representation of um, but we're there and there's this amazing speaker Ravi Zacharias and he he sparked something in my memory when he was speaking that I'd learned about in May in a, uh, in a world literature class and it made me feverishly go back and find where I was at in it. Oscar Wilde, is, if you've heard of him before, is this, you know, brilliant writer. Just, to, you know, just, to, just wrote all kinds of things. Um, the Portrait of Dorian Gray. You might have heard of I think Just a brilliant writer, have his times, but a complete atheist, you know, complete hedonist, all of the pleasures of life to the place that he's, in, he's about to die in his 40s. And I remember when I heard this in my class and this teacher is reviewing his life and giving like a little biography of it, I got sad on the inside and got to hurt because of this one singular thing. Although he conveys it beautifully. He's lived such a horrible, despicable life. He turns, it says, uh, you know, when they have the account and of, of his lover, he said, he, Robbie Ross, and he turns, he said, of all of the, uh, of all that we've ever loved, paraphrase a little bit. Have we ever loved anyone for their own sakes? Of course, Robbie replies, nope. What about you, Oscar? No. He said, get me a priest. For only Jesus can bear this heart of mine. What is our motivation whenever we hear loving God, loving others? Because why? It makes us feel good. 
because it serves some purpose or pleasure in us, because it gets us further financially along. Or is it because of relationship? Is it because of a sincere understanding of the goal of our Father in heaven that leads us to say, it's not about me being right. That's not the most important thing. How many people get killed on the heel of relationship every day? They pick that as their battle to die on. Oh, on this deal, I'm going to kill this relationship today because you don't understand it's complex. No, it's not. It's simple. If we could push our lives toward relationship, if we could push our lives toward the per, that peak of perfection and look beyond the moment, 10, 20 years, like my father said, he wanted to have a relationship. He loved me. Then we could literally change every aspect of our life. What if that was the case? And so that's my challenge in closing tonight with you. What is your end goal? What is your motivation? It's a process. But I would encourage you this. Make it a point. Your next communication. Tomorrow. Sit it up in your brain. My next communication. My next opportunity. Is going to be. Predicated upon. God's end goal. And I'm going to make it my end goal. Relationship. Would you do that? Would you be willing to just try it? And see where it takes you? Would you say, man, yeah, I'll give it a shot. I've never put it that way. See, we always try to approach things. Well, we're going to go mend this relationship. Why? Because I, I'm tired of dealing with it. I'm tired of the struggle. Or, oh, I'm going to be the better person. Or, I'm, or, or I'm right and I'm going to fix this. What if it was, I abdicate my position to God. Okay, God. In 10 years, if I can only have one thing with this person, what is it going to be? A relationship that at the very least points to Christ. Why? Because we don't know who we touch, who we affect. I find myself in these situations all the time as I begin to do this and uh, begin to uh, have such an amazing man in my life who's, who's been such a living example. He's an amazing, amazing man. A good father. A great pastor. Why? Because he not only cared about me, my family, he cares about you. He cares about your family. He cares about your children. He cares about your future. He prays over it. Many of you can attest to that. You've been there. He comes to you. You're, and he, he weeps with you. And he laughs with you. Why? What motivates someone like that? Well, it's someone who has the end goal in mind. See, it's not a manipulation. It's just a reality. Relationship. Try it. Just try to make that your end goal. It's not hard. It's simple. The why turns into the why not. Why not? You don't know who you're going to reach. The checker tomorrow, you might not even realize. But just that relationship. Why? Because you might see her in two weeks. Say, how's your aunt? You, you remember? Yeah. Oh, she's better. Good. I prayed for her. Because who knows? All we're doing is going to God's end goal, which is relationship. And who knows, through that one thing, it might bring one more treasure to the surface in the field that God has purchased. And that is the simplicity of the gospel 
And that is the simplicity of being a Christian. Christianity is not hard. It's easy. If you know the end goal. So would you do that? Try it out. Why not? I promise you. You're never too, too young or too old to try it. Let's pray. Father God, we sure do love you. Lord, that you reached your hand down into our hearts and took hold of the treasure. We sure do love you. How many more, Lord, do you desperately want to reach into? Father, I'm sorry I've made things so complicated over my life. I'm sorry I haven't focused on what you've been focused on. I thought I had been focusing, Lord. <laughs> I, thought it was, I thought it was all manner of things, Lord. But Lord, tonight, would you change our hearts? Would you change our minds to line up with your will and your goal? And Lord, all that you'll have left. Help us to refine that, Father. Speak to us tonight. Lord, keep us in perfect peace. And Father, put people in our path, knowing that we know what you desire. It's for us to love others. To have common care. To have relationship, Lord. Even if the relationship only points to you. Because, Lord, you can do the rest. Thank you for an opportunity. Seal this word in our hearts. Bless our families, Lord. Bless our community. Lord, this church is willing. We're willing, Lord. Send people. Send people, Lord God, that are hurt, that are broken, that are lost. Lord, we'll love them. We'll love them, Lord. We'll see the treasure. And Lord, we'll work the field for you. In Jesus' name, everybody said, amen. Hey, remember, it's about relationship. God bless you. So glad you're here. And go through your week with that in mind. Amen. Have a blessed evening.